Hello, good morning, everybody. I hope that you're ready for the word of God this morning. I'm ready to release what God has given me, and I pray that you are ready to receive it. We're studying the life of Joseph. Obviously, I'm building on this thing. We're going through the story, and there's so many lessons that we can learn from the life of, the life of Joseph that apply to our lives on a daily basis. Put in the chat, I'm going to make the most of my today. I'm going to make the most of my today while I'm waiting on my tomorrow, and I'm excited about this message. So, Listen, if you're watching right now on Vimeo Live, call somebody, text somebody, tell them to jump on and share the link with them. If you are watching on YouTube Live, like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified when we go live. Share the link. If you're watching on Facebook Live, on any one of the pages, just hit share right now. It's going to show up on your friends' pages and they'll be able to see it. Or you could tag somebody individually. Like if the Holy Spirit puts somebody on your heart, go in and put the at symbol, your friend's name, they'll be tagged and they'll be notified. If you're watching on X, retweet it. All right, so wherever you're watching this morning, get ready for the word. Uh, we're building our case. We're going through the life of Joseph. I love Joseph. This is going to be good teaching. So uh, good morning, Miss Sabrina. How you doing this morning? You and Lou, you're going to make the most of your today. That's right. Good morning, uh, Francis. Good morning. I pray that all is well with you. Uh, yep. Praise God. <laughs> Bed Stuy in the house. All right. Do or die, Bed Stuy. Tony Black. Good morning, Dr. Genia Anglin. Good morning. How you doing this morning? You know we love you, Miss Clarice. Good morning. I pray that you're ready for today. What's up, uh, Robert? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So Lisa and Holly were stationed in the Netherlands together. All right. All right. Well, hopefully we'll see you soon. Tony Malone. Good morning. Craig, 1000. God bless you, my brother. Glennis, uh, good morning. DJ, good morning. God bless you. My wife is watching from the gym. Uh, praise God. Uh, good morning, Janice. Good morning, Mama J. Good morning, Jean. Miss Georgia. Hey, Georgia, how you doing? We know we love you guys. You and Mike. Annie, Teresa, Steve, you and Melody. Good morning. God bless you. Wanda and Calvin. Good morning. Uh, Miss Monique. Monique Farrell. Good morning. God bless you. Kimberly, Jeffrey. Uh, good morning. Morning. God bless you. I see people are on. Craig, 1000. Lebra, Sean Davis, LaShawn, Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa, you and... Uh, um, Art are celebrating, I can't remember if it was 32 years or something like that, but anyway, happy anniversary to you. I pray that all is well with you guys. All right, good morning, good morning. All right, we're going to make the most of our today while we wait on our tomorrow. What's up, James Parks? I'm about to pray. So I'm about to pray for you guys, and then we're going to get into the word. Uh, hey, Monica, you know, we love you. Thank God for you, you and your beautiful family. Uh, Fergie, good morning, God bless you. All right, so let's pray. Let's pray. And then we get into this word. Victoria, good morning. Jewel, Joe, Eve, Bob, good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, y'all ready? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. On this Tuesday morning, as I'm meditating and medicating on your word and the life of Joseph, help me to communicate what you've given, given me for, for this morning. Help us to balance our tomorrow with our today, our now with our next. Help us not to lose the joy of our today because of the expectation of our tomorrow. I lift up every person that's watching now live and those who will watch later. I pray, Father, that you would manifest your peace, your grace, your anointing, your favor in their lives, that this word will go down into their heart and cause them to be encouraged, that it would reignite the joy, the joy of the Lord, that your joy would be their strength. I speak joy over every circumstance and situation, even those that are watching uh, in difficult circumstances and situations. We may have people that are watching uh, who are going through something very difficult. We have, may have people that are watching from a hospital room. And I pray, Father, that as they're watching, that they will be encouraged, that they will look up and not down, that they will look forward and not backward, and that your word will penetrate their heart and reignite the joy in their spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So I'm about to get started. If you haven't shared the message, please do so. Y'all ready? All right. Share the message. And uh, here we go. Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for April 9th, 2024. I'm teaching a series about living our lives with a laser focus on God's fixed purpose. I'll be teaching on that all year, 2024. So for 2024, we're focused on the fact that God has a purpose for our lives. This purpose is fixed. It was established before the world began. So what we want to do is we want to find it, right? The goal is to find it, follow it, finish it to discover it, develop in it, deploy into it, to become the man or the woman that God has called us to be. And for, for 2024, we're seeking to make the most of this particular season. 
so that at the end of 2024, we are incrementally closer to God's overall expected end for our lives. So having said that, I'm teaching on how to live with a laser focus on that fixed purpose and how to make the most of your journey. And we're studying the life of Joseph. I like to teach by both precept and example. I spent the first three months of the year laying the foundation for, for this series, for the year. And now, starting in April, we're studying the life of Joseph. That's going to take months. Then we're going to study the life of David. Then we're going to study the life of Paul or Peter or Gideon, whoever God says. But that'll be the whole year where we're laying the foundation on fixed purpose. And then we're, we're looking at examples. I like to teach by both precept and example. So as we're looking at the life of Joseph, the title of today's message is making the most of your today. What I don't want you to do is lose out on today because of the joy that you have for your tomorrow. So put in the chat, I will make the most of my today. This is going to be a good word. I want you to open up your heart now to receive. So let's get into the word. Now, our foundational scripture that we've been looking at all year, that we will continue to look at all year, is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25. From the Passion Translation, it says this, set your gaze on the path before you. Say this, I set my gaze. Joseph got a dream from God, and for many, many years, he had to set his gaze on that dream, even though his current circumstances and situations didn't look like they were supporting the dream. So when you're going through what you're going through, you got to set your gaze. Set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose, looking straight ahead, ignore life's distractions. I told you that this year would be a year of purpose, but also I told you that this year there will be many distractions. Say this, I will not be distracted. You got to refuse to be distracted. Now, there's a passage in James that we're also looking at that is pertinent to the life of Joseph, but is also germane to many of our lives as well, especially people that are currently enduring difficult circumstances or situations. James chapter one, verses two through four says this, my fellow believers, when it seems as though you're facing nothing but difficulties, can you identify with that? When it seems as though you're facing nothing but difficulties, See it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. That you can experience joy in the middle of difficulties. You can experience joy in the middle of a storm because joy is not happiness. Happiness is contingent upon happenings. Joy is the fruit of the spirit. So you can have joy in every situation. So you can experience the greatest joy that you can. Verse three says, for you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up within you the power to endure all things. So that, that power to endure all things is the grace of God is developed by patience. So your faith will be tested. And when it is, it develops in you the power to endure all things. Verse four says, and then as your endurance grows stronger, it will release perfection. Another, another translation says maturity. How do you mature? Well, I mature by not being moved by my circumstances. Where that this patient endurance is growing inside of me to where I'm maturing to the point, watch this, where it releases perfection or maturity into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. Make, make that your declaration. Put that in the chat. There will be nothing missing and nothing lacking in my life. Why? Because I'm getting to the point where I am mature, where I'm resting in God and I'm not moved by circumstances or situations. Now, we're looking at the life of Joseph. In Genesis chapter 39, the, the Bible says this, the Ishmaelites took Joseph to Egypt and sold them to Potiphar, the king's official that was in charge of the palace guard. We dealt with yesterday that this was, it, was, it just so happened that the people that Joseph's brothers sold them to turned around and sold them again. They sold them in Egypt. It just so happens that he wound up in Egypt 
and he went to the house of Potiphar, and this was a man that was assigned. He was the, the head of the secret service. So Joseph lived in the home of Potiphar, his Egyptian owner, and Potiphar realized quickly that the Lord was helping Joseph to be successful in everything that he did. Potiphar liked Joseph and made him his personal assistant, putting him in charge of his whole house, all the property, everything. Joseph was in charge of everything. He was the number two man. Because of Joseph, the Lord began to bless Potiphar's family and Potiphar's fields. The whole, the whole property was blessed because Joseph was there. And Potiphar left everything in Joseph's care. And the only decision that Potiphar made every day was what to eat. Now, Joseph would have never been there if Joseph had gotten bitter. If Joseph had gotten upset with God, because like, hey, God, you gave me this dream and now I'm a slave. Now what? And many people get upset with God. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Making the most of your today. So what does this mean for you today? I have four things to share with you in this morning. I'm going to try to contain myself, not to get too overly emotional, because I really want to communicate this in a way that you can see and hear and understand. You got it? Four things. Number one, here we go. Never hold God hostage to a specific time frame or expectation. Put in the chat, I will not hold God hostage. Okay, Brother Pena, what do you mean by that? I will explain. One of the major mistakes that baby Christians make immature Christians make is that they hold God hostage to their expectations. Let me explain. While they're waiting on God to do what they believe that God told them, right? So let's say in this case for Joseph, it was a dream. So you may have a dream or a promise from God. You may It may be very clear to you what God said about your future. Got it. But God may have given you the dream or the glimpse, or maybe God gave you a dream while you were sleeping, an open vision while you're awake. God spoke to you clearly or through someone else. However God spoke to you, God spoke to you. But you believe that you have an image of what God has called you to do. That doesn't mean that God told you when it's going to happen. So what immature people do is that they come up with an artificial timeline. They come up with artificial limits. They come up with artificial dates. And then they say, <laughs> and I've been there, we've all done this. Then they say, hey God, I need you to do this, which you said, now you said it, you said you was gonna do it, but I need you to do this by this date, right? Or this month or this year. And then they live with an expectation of manifestation that God is gonna do it by this particular date and they call that faith. But remember, faith begins where the will of God is known. So God may have told you what he's going to do, but if he didn't give you a date, then if you're holding him hostage to a date, then that's not faith. That's, that's high expectations based upon wrong information. That's not faith at all. Faith is tied to the word of God. Oh, but Brother Pena, I know what God said. Yes, but did he give you a date? No. Well, then stop holding God hostage to a date. So many people, immature believers... Hold God hostage to the point where if God doesn't do it when they wanted him to do it, then they shut down and now they're not going to do nothing for God. They stop going to church. Why? Because God didn't do it. You know, God said, but then God didn't do it. I tried that, that faith stuff and faith didn't work. No, faith tried you and you didn't work because that's not how faith works. And so there are believers that are throwing like a temper tantrum, like a five-year-old throws a temper tantrum when they don't get what they want when they want it. And, and, and. There are many believers that do that to God all the time. They throw a temper tantrum and it's like, well, no, no, no God didn't do it. And because God, listen, but you know, I, I know what God said. Yeah, I, fine. You know what God said, but did God tell you when he was going to do it? So yes, God gave Joseph the dream. What if Joseph had got to Potiphar's house and said, I'm not doing nothing because God gave me this dream and now I'm a slave. Well, then Joseph would not have maximized where he was, and, and Joseph would not have gone through the process of being prepared for his assignment. Listen, th th what I read for you in James, James said that mature believers have patient endurance. Put this in the chat. I have patient endurance. They're not moved by time or circumstance or conditions. Put that in the chat. Say this by faith. I am not moved by time, nor circumstance, nor conditions. I'm only moved by God. 
So for you to be a mature believer, you can't be holding these temper tantrums with God because God didn't do what you wanted him to do when he wanted you to do it. No, no, no. God didn't give you a date. If he didn't give you a date, then chill out. If God told you what he's going to do, then still believe God that he's going to do it. But you can't hold him hostage to a date if he never gave you a date. There are people that are holding God hostage to, I need you to do this and I need you to do it now. And if this doesn't happen, if that doesn't happen, and then they shut down and they get mad at God and now they're upset and now they leave this church and go to the next church and, and, then, and then they leave that church and go to the next church. This is childish and immature and foolish, but it happens every day. It happens every day where people say, I tried faith, faith didn't work. No, 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 no. No, once again, faith tried you and you didn't work. That's not the way it works. Faith is, I'm going to stand on the promises of God and God gives me, God is telling me what he's going to do. He's going to do it. Now, God didn't tell me when. And when God finally does it, I find out that his timing was better than my timing. So we have to learn how to celebrate God. Put in the chat, I make the most of my today. We got to learn how to celebrate God even in the midst of disappointment, even in the midst of challenge. I really want him to do it though. And, and, and March, I was believing God for March. I was decreeing and declaring March. And then March came and now we're in April. What am I going to do? See, well, did God tell you it was going to be March? Obviously he didn't because if he had told you March, then he would have done it in March. But now you came up with March and now you're upset with God because you came up with March and he didn't do it in March and now we're in April. So what are you going to do in April? Are you going to be sitting there pouting or are you going to be like, you know what? I'm sorry, God. You, I, you never said March. So how about I just make the most of my today because God, I know you're not in a hurry. You're going to manifest what you manifest in the fullness of your timing. So how about I, I'm, I'm going to make the most of my today while I wait on my tomorrow. And what I'm not going to do is miss out on the miracle of my today because I'm upset about my tomorrow. Joseph had a dream in his heart while he was sleeping in Potiphar's house. I thought about that again this morning. While I, when I got up, before I got out of the bed, I woke up this morning and before I got out of the bed, I was just laying there meditating on some of the things that God has told me about me about Rick Pena that haven't happened yet. And I was like, man, this is like Joseph sleeping in Potiphar's house. Like he's sleeping in Potiphar's house saying, yeah, uh, I guess this is okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm in charge of the whole place, but this is not what God said. And he's sleeping in Potiphar's house saying, but God, I know you gave me this dream and the dream hasn't happened yet. And, and so what am I going to do? Well, I, I guess I'm going to make the most of my present circumstances. I, I guess what I'm going to do, a mature believer has to learn how to keep the dream alive in your heart while at the same time, I'm keeping the dream alive while I'm going to make the most of my present circumstances. I'm not allowing the joy of my tomorrow to cause me to lose out on the joy of my today. Surprisingly enough, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of Joseph. Joseph was 17 years old when he wound up in Egypt. And this 17-year-old kid had the maturity to make the most of his today while he was waiting on his tomorrow. He did not shut down. He did not get upset with God. He did not pout. He made the most of his today while he was waiting on God to open the door for the, for the next phase of the tomorrow. And we can all learn from Joseph. We got to learn how to rest in God's timing. That's how we become mature. Put in the chat, I learned how to rest in God's timing. Here's some keys to embracing God's timing. I'm going to give you a bunch of these real quick. You ready? All right, here's the first one. To embrace God's timing, you must relinquish control of your life and let go of the projected timeline that you came up with. You got to trust that God's schedule is perfect. Put in the chat, say God's schedule is perfect. So relinquish control and let go of that timeline. Unless God gave you a time, don't put, watch this. Here's the next thing. Release artificial deadlines. Stop giving God deadlines. Stop giving, who are you to give God a deadline? Live, listen, if you want to live in the peace of God, you got to stop giving God a deadline if God didn't give you a deadline. So avoid setting limits on God. Know that God's ways are, are higher than your ways. His thoughts are higher than your thoughts. I'm helping somebody right now. You got to celebrate God continually, not just in the anticipation of what he's going to do. No, but you got to thank God for your now. You, you got to celebrate your now while you're waiting on your next. Put in the chat, I'm celebrating my now while I'm waiting on my next. Understand that maturity comes from trusting in God's timing, not dictating it. Let me say it again. A mature believer trusts God's timing, doesn't dictate it. I, who are you to dictate to God when it's supposed to happen? 
See, you got to cultivate patience, develop patience, and patience rests in the providence of God. Patience understands that it's not about you. Patience is, uh, when you when you are a patient believer, you're not making selfish demands of God. You're, you're not, you're waiting on the fullness of God's timing. You find, watch this, joy in the journey, not just the destination. Put that in the chat. I find joy in the journey, not just the destination. I accept that there's a certain level of mystery to walking with God, and God is not going to tell me everything, and God is not going to reveal everything, and God is not going to do everything when I want him to do it. So I trust that God is still working when I don't know that he's working, and I believe that, listen, at the end of the day, you've got it. I learned how to rest in God. Say amen to that. All right, number three, to make the most of your today while you wait on your tomorrow, you got to constantly remind yourself of the goodness of God in the present right? You got to meditate and meditate on the goodness of God. Constantly reminding yourself of God's goodness in the present will create an atmosphere of of the expectation of manifestation of what God is going to do, but it will also keep the joy of the Lord in your heart for now. See, if you make it a practice to make the most of your today and to feed your heart with good things and to notice and acknowledge all the good things that God is doing for your life right now in the present while you're waiting on your future, then it's going to be hard for the enemy to discourage you. And this is critical to living by faith because you're developing patience. But if you meditate, watch this, if you meditate and meditate on the wrong things, then you're going to get discouraged. And if you get discouraged, it's dangerous because discouragement will open the door to fear, doubt, unbelief, despair, defeat, and depression. Let me say that again. If you're frustrated, it opens the door to fear, doubt, unbelief, despair, defeat, and depression. You can be born again and depressed. You can be born again and depressed because you're meditating on the wrong things. But if you meditate on the goodness of God daily, then even in your current circumstance and situation, you can find something to give God praise for. Come on. If you look long enough, you you can find several things to give God the glory for. So it takes a certain level of maturity to say that, you know what? There's a certain level of mystery to walking with God. God is not going to tell me everything. I don't know why I'm going through what I'm going through. I don't know why God hasn't done what he said he's going to do, but I accept that there's a certain level of mystery to walking with God. And I got to get comfortable with a certain level of discomfort and watch this. I'm just going to find something to praise God for. And I'm going to praise God in my today while I'm waiting on my tomorrow and I'm developing faith and patience. And that way I can have the joy of my today. Watch this. And I'm not going to allow the joy of my tomorrow to rob me of the joy of my today. I told you that that happened to me years ago. Years ago, there's something that I know that God spoke to me very clearly. And it's a major thing. It's a major thing for me, right? It's super major. It's like, you know, it's, it's, it's a major thing for me. And, and it's something that I know is big for me. Um, and I know what God said, but it hasn't happened yet. And I've been waiting a long time, like well over 10 years at this point. But when a few years ago, I, I shared with you that a few years ago, I was so caught up with meditating on that thing that God hasn't done yet. He still hasn't done it. But I got so caught up in meditating on that thing that it's so easy to get caught up in your tomorrow and you could mess around and lose the joy of your today. So I was so caught up in what I know God said about my tomorrow that I was actually living miserable in my today. I made this mistake. You can make it. Many Christians make it. Joseph could have, thankfully he didn't, Joseph could have gotten so caught up in the dream that he hated being in Potiphar's house, but he didn't do that. He said, okay, listen, I know the dream is going to come. I don't know how it's going to come. It's going to come and it's going to come in the fullness of your timing. So let me make the most of my now while I wait on my next. And he started working and God started favoring the work of his hands. And so what I had to do when I was in that moment is I had to repent. And I was like, what am I doing? Why am I so upset? I was miserable because God hadn't done it yet. And I was like, come on, God. And I was upset with God and I was frustrated with God because God hadn't done it yet. And if you can love God and you can be a person that really has a heart and a passion for the things of God and be frustrated to the point where you're opening up your heart to despair and to depression. Why? Because you're meditating on the wrong things. Why? Because the expectation of your tomorrow is causing you to lose the joy of your today. Don't make that mistake. I made that mistake years ago. Thankfully, I repented. And now I still believe that what God told me is going to happen in the fullness of his timing. 
but I'm, I'm just going to enjoy the ride. Put in the chat, I'm going to enjoy the ride. So let me give you some keys to maintaining your joy, and then I'll close this out. This is number four, four out of four, last point for today. Keys to maintaining your joy while you're waiting on God. Do you remember the song, Count Your Blessings? <laughs> right? So you should count your blessings. Daily, you should recount the blessings of the Lord. You should create an atmosphere of praise. You should look around and constantly give God some praise for what he's doing in your now. It may not be what he told you. It may not be like your breakthrough. It may not be what you're expecting. It may not be what you're waiting on, but you got something to give God some praise for right now. So guard your heart against discouragement. How? By celebrating your now, by giving God praise, by always saying, you know what? I thank you. Like I'm, I'm waiting on some stuff. Uh, you have a business and you're waiting on, uh, on, a, on this big thing to happen and it hasn't happened yet, but you just got an email and you want a small thing. Give God praise for that. You know what I'm saying? Give God praise. Celebrate your today while you're waiting on your tomorrow. Keep your heart open. Keep your heart thankful. Rest, rest in the peace of God. See God's hand. Acknowledge God's hand at work in every area of your life. Celebrate the little things. Live fully now. While you're meditating on the promises of God, make the most of your now. Say that I'm going to enjoy my today. Every day is a blessing. Encourage others. Tell your story. Give a testimony. Let people know that, listen, I'm enjoying the journey, not just the destination. Share what God is doing in your life. Stay rooted and grounded in the word of God. Meditate and medicate on God's word day and night. Believe that the goodness of of God that you're experiencing right now is a preview. It's like coming soon. Like, like you're what? Yeah, yeah, Lord. Yes, the, what I'm experiencing right now, this is a preview of my tomorrow that I'm watching like a movie trailer. God, I'll go back, go to your prayer closet and remind God of what he said to you. And at the end, well, like a movie trailer, just see coming soon and it's coming, but I'm going to make the most of my now. I'm not going to let that thing, my joy, the joy and the expectation of my tomorrow I refuse to allow that to rob me of the joy of my today. I'm going to make the most of my today while I'm waiting on my tomorrow. Say amen to that. I tried to contain myself. I think I did a good job of that. And so let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. This is solid teaching, y'all. This is solid teaching. This is something that we all need. Now speak this over your life. Say, Father, I declare my trust in your divine timing. I know that you orchestrate every detail of my life <laughs> to work out for my good. I release every timeline and expectation that I came up with in my heart, and then I keep my heart open to your plan, which will unfold at your pace. I commit to rejoicing in the present goodness and finding joy in each day. I am not discouraged by delays. I trust you through the process. I embrace the lessons that I'm learning while I'm waiting. And I trust that you are moving even when I can't see it. So I choose to live fully today, knowing that it's preparing me for my tomorrow. I stand firm in faith confident that your promises will manifest at just the right time. And I believe that your goodness today is a glimpse of the greater that's coming for me in my tomorrow. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. Now this is today's word. Tomorrow I'm going to have another one. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, why would you not get my notes? I'm giving you my notes for free. Go to todaysword.org, click on the big red subscribe button on the top right, put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. I want you to do three things for me. Number one, leave me some comments right now in the chat if this message was a blessing to you. Number two, share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. And number three, pay attention to this video I'm about to share with you as I go. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. If our ministry is a blessing to you, please consider becoming a partner with Rick and Isabella Pena Ministries. Not only will you support the Word of God going out on a daily basis, but you will also support our school in the Dominican Republic, where we are providing 200 Haitian children a Christ-based education free of charge and also a hot meal every day. If you want to become a partner with us, go to ripministries.org and you'll be able to do so there.
If you don't have any of my materials, well, let me just show you a few things. Well, this is my first book, Level Up Your Life, where I cover how to level up your life in five areas of your life. Here's Grace-Based Success. It's a daily devotional where in 28 days, you'll be able to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then here's two affirmations books, one for men and one for women. These books will help you to align your faith, your heart, and your lips with the word of God, or just go to rickpina.co. You'll see all the books there, apparel. Please make yourself available to those materials. They will be a blessing to you. Lastly, Isabella and I have been committed to coaching and mentorship for many, many years. And the Lord led me to use a platform where I could do it online, where we can leverage ourselves and scale. So now we have over 600 videos and continuing to grow. We're recording videos on a weekly basis where we're covering how to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and how to be successful as a Christian and in business and with relationships and etc. So if you're interested in that, please go to patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina. You will be blessed. Thank you for being a blessing to us. And we pray that we will continue to be a blessing.